For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy. To ghostly phenomena in our own backyard. We will dive into our psychic abilities. And explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Jeff, we're here. We're all cloaked and set. What's what, up? What are you, in prison again? You're in jail more often than Lindsay Lohan. What's your deal? Why does this place look like that Shawshank Redemption? Oh, good movie. <laughs> hey, guys, listen. Uh, I need you to bust me out of here. Oh, yeah, sure. We can, uh, we can get you out, Jeff. Don't we, worry about it. We got it covered. Let us work on it. We got it covered. We'll check back in with you guys a little bit later, and uh, we'll see where we're at, okay? Gotcha. Good. It's part of my crew. That's Andrew. That's Matt. They're outside. The ship is closed. So if you go outside and take pictures of a UFO, you're not going to see it. Okay? It's invisible. It's invisible. It's invisible. All right. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. <laughs> We're going to read our esteemed panel tonight. Starting at the end, the host of Darkness on the Edge of Town Radio. You've seen him on Ghost Adventures, and of course, Paranormal Challenge, Dave Schrader. Stacey Jones, you've seen her on Ghost Adventures as well. Bachelorette number two, for Bachelorette number three, Billy Tully. You've seen him on Ghost Adventures Paranormal Challenge Equipment Tech EVP guy, Billy Tully. I got the mic, don't cross me. <laughs> this is my ship. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Ghost Adventures, Aaron Goodwin. Psychic medium, intuitive, you've seen him on a &E, biography, sci-fi, Michael Perry. Right, we're gonna pass the microphone around. It's gonna be kind of fun, and we're out of here in 30 minutes, okay? Because that's the show. It's not 40 out of minutes, it's 30. <laughs> so, stay with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're cruising now. All right, I know uh, three of you, uh, Aaron, Billy, and Dave, have investigated here before. Uh, Michael and Stacy, you too. This is your first time. Quick, quick impressions. Um, have you had personal experiences here, Dave? Yes. Great. And <laughs> first impression of the prison when you rolled in? It looks like it's from that TV Shawshank. Exactly. Okay, I can get it right. Yeah. They built an exact duplicate of this prison for that movie. In me. In Maine. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Billy, what happened to you the first time you investigated here? I feel comfortable here. <laughs> that's all, that's all I have. Nothing paranormal? Actually, uh, yeah. Um, we'll expand. <laughs> he's sucky. Oh, They're not. <laughs> I find it actually quite, quite a few EVPs in the cells, and not nice stuff. Either, so. Anything personal? Uh, not towards me, but okay. just some of the people that were in our private group. So. Excellent. Aaron, what about you? Uh, I have to do the episode here and what we did. Uh, the next time I'm hunting, I've just experienced dark, crazy stuff. A lot of you guys experienced it too. This place is pretty gnarly. I love it. Is that? Yeah. Alright, first impressions, psychic impressions, or otherwise when you, when you rolled into Mansfield? Yeah. Sad. Kind of. Reminiscing feelings and um, wondering what's going to happen tomorrow morning when I do the group. <laughs> Were you sad when Dave told you you had to be on 30 odd minutes? Was that maybe that's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, really? Oh, for us. 
Yeah, no. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, on 30 odd minutes, we know you don't have a lot of time, which is why it's 30 minutes. We want to give you your paranormal really quick. And, uh, and, and speaking of psychics, we, we did get one behind bars once and asked him just one question, our one question interview. One question interview. Where did you check out the study of being best known as uh, psychic from Psychic Kids? I mean, Chip, this is your one question interview. Goes up to 
these guys, and they're like, you know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, why are you hanging out in the laundry bed having your laundry? And then one guy turns to the other and goes, you should tell him. Tell me what? We think our house is haunted and we're here to stay safe. So my partner, my partner just stands and looks at him, and just looks at him for about 30 seconds, and doesn't say anything, he turns and goes, and this to me, and, I, and he goes, well, you know, Stacy, and I'm like, don't you do it, you do this. And he goes, Stacy, she knows a lot of history, and I'm like, ooh. Because, you know, that's, it, it, it's to draw the line between being that police officer and then being that paranormal investigator, it's, it's, I want to keep it separate. Right. And that's one thing I don't want to, you know, have to stop somebody and they turn around and go, you know my house is haunted, would you come over? No. Can I give you a ticket then? Right. <laughs> There's a quick follow-up. Um, I know sometimes police officers have to go to tragic scenes, this fatality. You ever walk up on like a, a car accident where you go to fatality and just kind of look around and pull out the EMF meter? Yeah, meter? absolutely. Just absolutely. EMF meter right over the body, see if anything goes off. Yeah, that, you know, you, you always bring the recorder to the, you know, nice. funerals and, <laughs> who did it? Who did it? <laughs> this will give me a raise. Who did it? <laughs> Question for Michael over here, actually. Have you uh, had the opportunity to work with the police uh, in the psychic sense? Yeah. And, and what's that like? I mean, when they come to you, is it just kind of like, hey, Michael, can we be right back? <laughs> no, but they're, they're often, uh, they want to keep it on a low key. So Why? They don't have buddies to know what they do when you know, they're, they're trying to find out. Um, there was a, a thing that happened a while ago where uh, I got a visit from some spirits and they told me that there was going to be an assassination uh, to do with the president. And so I got hold of this FBI guy and uh, he'd recently been converted by Marty drawing a picture of an inmate that he used to know. So I did the session with him and because uh, I needed the date and the time. And it turned out to be the date of Osama bin Laden's assassination and the time. Wow. Interesting. And he had told the uh, friend of his that was in the Secret Service who apparently told the Secret Service agents that they were not present. So... <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. So, right, interesting. Stuff like that. So, but, I mean, one more quick question. Do you, do you worry, you know, like, okay, if, you, if you're working on a murder, let's say, you know, I think it was Colonel Mustard with the candlestick, and it turns out it was, you were a suspect. Saying. Well, yeah, I mean, that stuff uh, has happened. Right. I mean, it was like that told the uh, Bat 911 and she got put in prison for two, two months. Uh, yeah, Three squares a hot. day? Oh, well, you know, they interrogated her and kept her and like, she just it. <laughs> right. Aaron, for you, um, on Ghost Adventures, not a whole lot of psychics on the show. There's been a few. Uh, Chris Fleming, of course, been on and, and um, used it a few times. Do, do you think that that's, that's a viable part of the investigation? Psychic medium? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Good yeah. answer. Uh, that's, that's more of a Zach and Nick question. They handle all that stuff. Uh, that's, wait, should we call them? <laughs> yeah, let's call them real quick. Like, Fill me up. Is, did you get a phone call? This is one guy we talked to, and he's our researcher, but we can never do anything else. <laughs> Damn, what? <laughs> when we see him in graveyards, it's weird. It is weird. Although we do see him at Gary Goffin's shop coming up in a new episode. That's right. <laughs> Eric, shame the log. It's Aaron, you know, Aaron's working his camera, and uh, we, were, we were filming it at Gary Galkas, which uh, for it's an upcoming episode, he makes the bell meter. It was like going to the Santa's Elf shop and seeing all the equipment. It was amazing. Yeah. We're just like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> so he's got his whole crew making this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. What did you think when you saw that? It was pretty cool, because, like, you know you buy it, you see if you have it, but to see who's making it, and then, like, how it's all made, and then you look over at the show, and it's <laughs> like, <laughs>
ran for a season on the Travel Channel, and yeah, this is a lot of Like that? Yeah, you know, we took a lot of heat actually at first, because people were like, oh, the paranormal shouldn't be a, a game show. What really attracted me to the idea of doing the show was the fact of not even making it a game show, but getting a chance to see uh, some of the amazing ways that people investigate brought out, and then giving people that are at home a few of some of the goofy teams that are out there too. Why don't you should just let any nut back into your house that's got a melody? Right? Amen. Okay. 
Guitar or drums? Oh, I hate the guitar or drums. All right. And Mike, a final one. What TV show is your secret guilty pleasure? <laughs> You've never admitted this before. You could say it rhymes with Mersey 4. <laughs> secret, secret guilty obsession. Uh, it definitely be just House. House, all right. You know he's a Brit, right? Is that why? All right. Um, the funny thing is, you know, we've been to Mansfield a few times now, and it's a great town, great place. And Aaron's talked about some of the experiences in here. Actually, this is pretty wild. We have Aaron Goodwin's most frightening <laughs> Mansfield <laughs> world. Come on, Tim. Are you ready? Oh, God. Get to your happy place now, Aaron. I don't know where it is. <laughs> So of course, being a good investigator, I said, "Shut up and go back to bed." <laughs> and he goes, he goes, 
And she goes, tell me the other thing. He goes, oh yeah, Daddy, it's like that boy on my top bunk. And I said, honey, that's your brother. And he says, no, Daddy, Nathan is sleeping. The boy on my top bunk is sitting there. Now remember, picture of little Opie, right? He goes, no, Daddy, that boy on the top bunk is sitting there looking, looking at me like this. <laughs> To which I, being a good father, knowing my other son was still upstairs, I said, here, you just cuddle with daddy, we'll leave Nathan and sleep. <laughs> I eventually went up there after turning every light on in the house, right? Funny thing happened, we were talking to a couple people about this story last year. Uh, Bob Merch, Ouija board expert, also been a guest on 30 Odd Minutes, uh, was here. And Bob's, Bob's a Ouija historian, like knows all about it, great guy, but not a ghost hunter. And doesn't believe, but doesn't disbelieve. You know, I think like the most regular people, somewhere in the middle. And we were in the administrative building, and Schrader's upstairs, and I was on the second floor with my group, and suddenly I hear, yeah. And I'm like, right, that's one of two things. So that is going to sound like, So having ruled that out, I was like, ah. Alright, I'm going, I was, I, so I ran up to the third floor where I figured it was Dave screwed around, and, and Merch is standing next to him, just like, come on, come on, come on, open the door, just open, footsteps, it was like, like a scooby doo episode. <laughs> it was great, because here we are trying to fake a little, you know, people just to freak Jeff out in his group, and as we do it, we're both like, all of a sudden we hear, and we both stop and turn around, and then you hear the footsteps across the floor, and Merch and I go, all fun and games until you have to change your underwear. <laughs> Absolutely. So this place, I mean, this place is insanely active. Uh, I wish we could have got the whole mothership in here, but sadly we can't. Uh, Michael, question for you. We talked about stuff following people home. What do you recommend when you feel, I mean, you got to feel safe in your house. That's important. We do, we come here. We want the ghost to be in Mansfield, and we have our experiences and we go back to our house. What do you do when you think this stuff followed you home? What's, any advice? Move. Back to uh, <laughs> Well, I just think you just have to be totally positive, okay? You just have to be very, um, be as spiritual minded as you can be, and just realize that you have friends, uh, they're family members that you may not even know, your great grandparents, uncles, aunts, and they're around and they'll help you, and they'll make sure nobody messes with you, and you just have to be positive, and, and if there is anyone hanging around, trust me, if there's a positive atmosphere, they won't stay. Just want to be able to stay there. So. Do those all those fine relatives follow you and say prison? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering what they're thinking. Right? <laughs> it's not visiting. I've actually, I've actually thought and talked to uh, a couple of people in the uh, in the uh, justice system right. about going into prison. I actually talked with one guy who was thinking about might be an idea. So I thought, well, wow, maybe it'd be a first. It sure would be helpful for a lot of prisoners, I would think, if they could place it, huh? Yeah. Might help them. Really seriously help them. <clears throat> and if you find yourself, I mean, do you find yourself taking on the emotions, maybe, of people that are here sometimes? Oh, yeah. Maybe it's difficult to sit down? You there, come in. Yeah, yep, yeah, I'm here, guys. Okay, we got the ship repaired, and we'll be ready to get you out of there. All right, what do you need me to do? Wrap the show up, get the credits rolling, and when you hear the distraction, run. All right, I think it's time to do a t prison break here. <laughs> oh, that's probably the sign. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been 30 odd minutes. Please give a big hand for our people.